theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. Yeah, I, I, I worry, too, you know. I might be a cop back there in the alley waiting to pounce. You've got too much imagination. You've got to clear me if that happens, even if it spoils the joke on your wife. Yeah, but you got no problem. I'm the guy with problems. That Vilma complicating things. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Vincent Price. We're in the Sand Bar. A gritty little drinking place at the bottom of town. We're about to meet the two major characters in a story that has as many twists and turns as a pretzel. Oh, when did I walk into it? Did I ever? <laughs> like, a, like a cow with a clover. Gabby Gerstein. Gabby is one of those patsies you notice when he's around. He's no dummy. Laughs at his bad luck. But if a stick has two ends, and few don't, Gabby's bound to grab the wrong end. So? The joke's on. Guess who? He tries not to be a patsy. He's careful. Keeps his defenses up. Dodges and rolls with those Monday to Friday punches we all have to survive. He looks like a winner. Suddenly, though, sure as rain on your birthday, he opens up for that solid punch to his down button, and down he goes. Right. <laughs> the joke's on nobody else. Like I said, did I meet a chick? The chick. What a chick. Only last month. I got it good and wonderful at last. I tell everybody. I buy the chick this. I buy that. She's my total. You, you know the feeling? I, I even give her my credit card. And she cleans me out. Up to, takes all my furniture, too. Leaves me one chair. One chair. Why one chair? Bugs me, too. Yeah. Why does she leave it? One chair. To show she's got a decent streak in it? <laughs> it's at this high point in his life that Gabby meets up with Wilf Hinchcliffe in the sandbar. Hey, did I hear to you, Wilf Hinchcliffe? Yeah, you're big in the papers this month. Who are you? They did something big in Vietnam. Yeah, survived it. You want to make a buck if you're cleaned up? Oh, could I use a buck? How'd you like to play a prank on my wife? A hundred bucks in it for you, Gabby. A joke on somebody else? That's a switcheroo. You're on? Why not? Tell me more. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Jokes on Guess Who, by Len Peterson. Our stars, Barney Phillips and Robert Towers. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Hinchcliffe, a Vietnam War hero, and Gabby Gerstein, an inveterate patsy, had struck up an acquaintance in a sleazy saloon called the Sand Bar. There's nothing we can say at this point about how opposites attract each other, because Wilf and Gabby haven't yet struck a bargain between them. But it sounds as if they're well on their way to do it. Well, you look okay to me, Gabby. You know, when I was in Nam, I could always tell how my guys had handled themselves in a tight spot. By their laugh. And you got a good one, huh? <laughs> good for what? Oh, getting your drinks on me at the sandbar here. That's not good. Yeah, you got a point. Think I'd waste time and money on a yuck when there's no profit and no fun? And I'm... Uh... Both. Me? I'm choosy, too. <laughs> Except for that, that crazy chick. She didn't turn out to be such wise chicken. What's the deal? My deal? Your deal. My chick. The wife, Judy. And she's got this thing that bugs me, her put-down. Oh. In the Army, everything is a put-down, right? A joke, not serious. Because if you don't laugh, we're shooting as you go bananas. But back in civvies, after what happened to so many of my buddies, well, I take it serious, so what? Uh, Give me time, and maybe I'll take serious what my chick done to, uh... <laughs> yes, sir? Gabby, you're my man. <laughs> you're my patsy. A hundred bucks to pull a joke on your wife? One joke? 
That's better pay than most stand-up comics and headliners get. What's the joke? Look, I haven't been sitting there like a big blowhard, have I? Not so you'd notice it, huh? A model of modesty if you're the real Wilt Hinchcliffe war hero. Good enough to do. We all got our ego, even you, huh? Oh, under this patchy front on General Sherman, Pat, and Westmoreland. And I can't complain. I get more respect than I deserve. In fact, I, I get treated like I've done something. Something worth something in the shooting war. I get it everywhere, except from Judy. She puts down everything I did in the war. Well, even them things that they... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got me a few of the good medals, even though I sure don't think of them as mine. It was all the guys. So when she puts me down, she's putting down all us guys in Company C. My company, the survivors, and the... Well, you, you can see she gets to me, huh? Yeah. So uh, I got to prove my courage to her. Prove it like some show-off kid. Pathetic, huh? But it's this, or, well, I don't know what, for her, for both of us. Okay, I'm in. I'm on. So, what's the scenario, Will? Well, there's only one trick I can think of to stop her wisecracks. Here, slip this in your pocket. Hey, what are you giving? Put it in your pocket. Don't flash it around. It's a gun, an automatic. Cool it in your jacket. Don't make it a news announcement. Mr. Hinchcliffe, I ain't no gunman. Oh, why so serious all of a sudden? I tell you, it's just a practical joke we're pulling on Judy. Now, keep laughing, Gabby. I take guns seriously. Uh, a cousin of mine, he, he, he got killed accidentally horsing around with a gun with my brother. So I take guns serious. I never fired a shot in my life. Now, I sure don't want you to start now, so pack it away, man. Into your pocket, jokester. <laughs> you hear the genuine article, a real card, Gabby. You pulled it off. You had me believing you're gun shy. A kook with a real phobia for pop guns. But you're what? Crack shot? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. All my life, I'm funniest when I don't try to be funny. <laughs> when I'm serious. Okay, jokester, here's the deal. All I want you to do in about 20 minutes is pretend to mug me and Judy in the alleyway just east along the block after I fetch her from a concert she's at and walk her past here to drive her home. That's a joke. Then you let me attack you, take the gun off you, and chase you away. I still ain't laughing. Okay, it's a serious joke. You like this rock group? Hey, you a regular here at Sandbar? First time. Me too. Won't ever get written up in the papers, this joint. Hey, you know what? You could make this place into a something. Me? Yeah, if word gets around it, this was your drinking spot. Well, think us. The war heroes hang out. Cool it. I'm sick of this dumb hero worship. But you still want it from your wife, huh? I want some respect from her, that's what. Just like Rodney Dangerfield, right? Oh, no, <laughs> no, not at all. More than that. She thinks the war ruined me. Ruined me for what? What's so wonderful about her fancy culture vulture set? Hey, I got the soul of a promoter, everybody says. But I, I just never met it up with nothing really big to promote. Not yet. Everything so far is a joke. Oh, and guess who, huh? Right! <laughs> guess who? Gabby Gerstein. So you promote this little bit of trickery on my dear wife, huh? Help me straighten her out? Why not? Exactly. Why not, Gabby? It'll be the easiest hundred bucks you ever made. A bargain has finally been struck between Wilf Hinchcliffe and Gabby Gerstein after the briefest kind of drinking acquaintance. And Gabby, sitting in the sandbar with Wilf's gun in his pocket, is the first to reflect on how they came to meet. I just dropped in here for a quick drink. I've been around the corner seeing about a job. I was told yesterday, sure, the job's yours, Gabby. But I turn up this evening to go over details with the area supervisor, and he says, sorry, my wife's brother's got the job. I, I just turned on another job myself. Too late to go back now. And the joke's on. Don't say it. Don't, don't. So you can spare the time for this 10-minute caper with Judy? I wanted to see there's such a thing as, well, courage. The kind needed in the war, even when you're scared. Scare her some. Scare some of that sneering out of her. Yeah. And, oh, make it tough for me to get the gun off you. So she'll be impressed, you know. Even fire a wild shot if you want. It's loaded? You mean this gun you gave me is loaded? Of course it's loaded. And, uh, make it convincing. Gee, 
She what? This is a pretty kinky joke. Well, it's not as kinky as my Judy and her Don putting everything about the war. Any war, every war. Wars are bad, so don't have wars. It's that simple for her. That's not kinky? Me, I misunderstand wars, too. Well, I'm not asking you to understand, Gabby. Just play this educational joke on my wife. Kind of cheap, Jack. For a hundred cheap Jack bucks? You don't need the doll? Okay, okay, forget it. I do need the doll. You better believe it. So you're on? You don't worry, Wilson Quick. Worry? Yeah, I might make it a double twist, a double whammy. You know what I mean. Do this stick up for real and uh, clean you out like my chick did me. She made me crazy enough. Wow, wow, wow. I'll risk it. Risk? Risk me getting nasty and keeping the gun? Flashing it for real? Taking this watch, your wallet, car keys, your lady's jewelry? Did I read you married Claire's money? Oh, not a bad haul, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever think of that possibility? In the war, Gabby, I thought of ten every second. That's how I survived. I'm good at sizing up possibilities. Just why I picked you to pull this trick on Judy. Yeah? You're not the kind to double cross. <laughs> no? Now, with that laugh you've got, Gabby. <laughs> yeah? Grab your hat. Come on, here's your hundred bucks. This time, the joke's on. <laughs> guess who? <laughs> yeah, I can guess. But can you? <laughs> Surprise, surprise, me on time, picking you up. I told Vilma you'd be late. Vilma? Vilma? Derek. I thought you were going to the concert alone. Ran into her in the lobby. I said we'd give her a lift home. Oh, no. Uh, she popped into the store back there to uh, pick up a couple of things. Now, what's that sour look? Judy, have we ever gotten involved with Vilma that... Uh, that what? That she hasn't complicated things? I know you don't like her. I do. Now, the culture vulture is all she is, ah. Oh, Will. Now, stop calling everybody who, who goes to anything but a movie or a, or a ball game a culture vulture. I mean, it's the same way you talk about some things in the war. I didn't make it. I was just in it. But you carry on like I started it. Oh, silly, I don't. Let's not quarrel tonight, darling. Well, you started it with this uh, getting involved with Vilma Derrick. Driving her home? That's involved? Yeah. How? I mean, what's so terrible about Vilma? Well, can't we go? Let her find her own way home. When she lives down the hall from us? We can't drive her home? Oh, really, Wilf. <laughs> the things that upset you. She'll find something on the way she has to see to, or when we get to the apartment to do and involve us. Has anything ever been simple when we've been with her? She likes you, I can tell. Can't you like her a teeny bit? Come on, come on. The car's parked three blocks over, close as I could get. You get the car. I'll wait for Vilma. Vilma. You can come pick us up. These, these one-way, no-access streets, it's stupid when we can walk straight to the car. Come on, Vilma will see us and catch up. No, uh, I'll wait. Do I have to drag you? Come on! Now, let's go. Let me go, Will. Please. These are the safest streets to be walking alone on. So come along, then. And Vilma? We can watch out for her most of the way to the car. See what I mean about her interfering? This is crazy. Making an issue over what? Nothing. All my issues are over nothing. No. Come with me or go with her. Do as you please. Okay, okay. But when I get to the car, I'm driving off home. With or without you. You better stick with Vilma. I'm just going to tell her to catch up to us, Will. If she hasn't found what she wants in the store yet, anything to calm you down. Hey, hey, Hinchcliffe, Will, what's this? I wish I knew, Gabby. Uh, I've been hiding here, waiting in this alleyway, <laughs> with Gad at the ready. <laughs> what's it, your wife? Coming, not coming, coming, not coming. What's this? Only a few little complications, Gabby. Life's little complications. You just stay out of sight. Won't be long now. it was all going to be so simple when he hired Gabby Gerstein to pretend he was a stick-up man so that Wilf could impress his wife by demonstrating his courage in front of her. But Judy, Wilf's wife, 
has unwittingly complicated the whole situation by failing to arrive on the scene. Yeah, they always come equip women with their complicated complications. <laughs> they wear them like jewelry. What's so complicated about you and her walking along past my little alleyway here? Hey, hey, keep back. Don't show yourself. God, the handle's all sweaty. You got me nervous taking so long. I, I'm beginning to feel I'm earning my hundred bucks. Nervous? About what? I, I, it's for real. My luck, huh? If a cop comes along, nabs me on suspicion, hiding in his alley, frisks me, finds I'm packing hardware without a license. You spooky, is he? Well, just my luck. Right when I get you and your wife arms up against the bricks, then a cop comes by. Takes me for a neighborhood mugger, huh? The coast is clear now, but is it going to stay this way? It's cop country, this part of town. I wish I had your troubles, Gabby, not mine. Trade you any time. Class, class, you chick, you got a job, you're a name. Judy's picked up a neighborhood girlfriend to drive home. The stick-up is off if they come along together. Oh, I don't mind. See, well, listen, I'll stick up all three of you. No extra charge. Another babe, you can impress them both. Unarmed and taking his gat off me, they'll both be kissing you. And ooh, and it's a hero. I said no go, Gabby. No go if they both come along together. Yeah, I, I, I worry too, you know. There might be a cop back there in the alley waiting to pounce. You've got too much imagination. You've got to clear me if that happens. Even if it spoils the joke on your wife. Gabby, you got no problems. I'm the guy with problems. That Vilma complicating things? Not as much as some cop hanging in the shadows waiting to pounce. What cop? What cop? You cracking up? Hey, you want to give me the hundred bucks back? No, no, no. You're just playing your game. That's all. Working through the possibilities. Tell you what. I'll play it straight if a cop comes along. Let him cop me off to the police station so your wife don't catch on. But you better come along soon after and explain to the fuzz. And I want extra pay for that. A deal's a deal. Okay. An extra 25. Yeah, but what if the cop starts shooting at me? It's just like that. Shoot back. You're kidding. You're not serious. You're kidding. An extra 10 for every bullet that hits you. Oh, oh man. <laughs> then the joke would be on death who for sure. Oh, what have I got myself in for up here? A nut. Hey, give me the gun, give me the money, and goodbye. No, 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 I'm still rolling with you. He's clear still on the team. Guys in the army, Gabby. Wobbly as you. We got rid of fast. Oh, I'm not wobbly. I'm okay. It's supposed to be a fun thing. But the way you were... You really cooking up a double cross, Gabby? A double whammy on me? Why are you so service nervous? Yeah. <laughs> I scare you. Got you, Reggie, too. Right? Hold it. Keep back in the shadows. Judy's come out again. And without Vilma. Hey, Judy, you coming? Judy! Coming, darling, I'm coming. Vilma's just paying for what she bought. I told her I'd hurry along to calm down old Grouchy. Oh, who needs to calm down? <laughs> Listen to you, you mean old teddy bear. Sounds nice, looks nice. Why can't you handle that, man? Back, Gabby, out of sight. Ready for a joke. Ready, funny guy? Uh, I'm sorry, honey, uh... I'm a heel making such a fuss. Well, you you be nice to go when she comes. And I'll give you a big kiss. Now. Payment in advance. Love is delight. Sorry I ain't got a camera. Only this pop gun. But it'll do for what I want. Oh, who are you? <laughs> Lady, it's not who we is, but what we got that counts. I got a gun. You got valuables. With a toy gun like that? Toy gun. Wanna bet? Have a uh, Don't do anything crazy. He's the crazy. Come into the alley, huh? I don't like so we don't draw a crowd. Let's keep this private. Too bad you don't know who you're tackling. Cut the gas. Just come. Just come. Come on. Wallet. Price. You uh, just hold it, buddy. Hey. What's that gun you got? What's this game? You don't need that. I kind of do. What? Why, you shoot me, Cliff? I ain't shooting. <laughs> what kind of joke is this? I'm bleeding. <laughs> wonder if I've got courage, guts to do what has to be done. You still wonder? It's after your first shot. Well, he, he dropped his gun. Yeah, and I'd better pick it up right now just in case it... You didn't need to keep shooting. What do you know? You didn't. You, you have to wipe out danger completely. You leave nothing. Don't sneer. Don't laugh. Don't lecture me. Uh, I'm never going to hear the end of this. Huh? Dead. 
You killed him. Bless you, you. He's dead because he had a gun. But you, moralizing, you think it's okay just leaving these armed jerks around? Anyone dangerous? Or harmless looking like you? Huh? Well, darling. What? All right, what's this? What's going on here? Give me that gun. Back off! Back off! You hear me? Back off! That punk killed my wife. That fiend! Oh, Daddy, what's happened? Oh, you shoot him? Oh, what for? Shoot him. He tried to mug us. That punk, when my wife started to back out of the alley, he shot and killed her. She's still breathing. Not dead? She's not dead? Officer Tom Gettys, 614. Yes, Gettys. Shooting on McKay Street, alleyway between Porter and Tilson. Two wounded, ten ambulance. Pass. Right. That punk's got to be dead. Medics will decide that. He shot and killed Judy, so I shot and killed him. How'd you get a gun? Your name? I, I, I run a security courier service. Had a rush job tonight after my men had gone home. It's the only reason I'm carrying this gun. What's your name? Will Hinchcliffe. Here, identification permit works. Good. Sure. You're not the Hinchcliffe from Vietnam? Yeah, well, I wish I wasn't. Stupid notoriety. That punk picked the wrong guy on the wrong night. I'm Dr. Langston, Mr. Hinchcliffe. I, uh, I'm sorry we, we did all we could, but your wife... Yeah? We couldn't pull her through. Did? Say so. And the guy, the one who shot her? Dead on arrival. Good. Now, this last little formality, Mr. Hinchcliffe, a transcript of your verbal report of the mugging and shooting. Would you mind signing it at the bottom here for our police records? Here, Inspector? Yeah, there, yeah. Uh, I signed too many of these. These? In Vietnam, how my guys died and the civilians. But I never expected this here. Mm, well, we expect it, but not the surprise your mugger got. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gerstein. Gerstein? His name was Gerstein? Gabby Gerstein? No, Gerald Gerstein. Well, it could be the same guy. Though I didn't get much of a look at him in the alley. Yeah, here. Some shots taken of him in the hospital. Yeah, that's the same guy, all right. Had some drinks off me at the sandbar while I was putting in time, waiting for my wife to come out of the concert. Maybe I said something about going to pick her up. So and so free drinks off me and jumps me. He sat with you? Yeah, at my table, yeah. The waiter or somebody there probably remembers. I was dumb enough to tell him my name. Oh, uh, you're Captain Hinchcliffe. Usual bladder. Kept pumping me about the war. He seemed a pleasant enough guy. But he turns out to be a punk. A punk lady killer. Yeah. And it'd be good for this town if more punks on the prowl met up with vets who can take care of themselves the way you did. So when the shooting's done, the joke's on the punk. Huh? What? what? What's wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. That, that would solve a few problems. Discourage some muggers, yeah. Except, you know, there's no real solution. When someone innocent is your wife... Gets it, too. Well, you know, I'm sorry to put you through this questioning, Mr. Hinchcliffe. I should give you a police medal no, for... No, no thanks. Judy's death makes everything else... Oh, of course. Of course. Gabby the Patsy. I warn you. <laughs> Hilarious. 
the last three shots, the pound will fall in the double switch. So the joke's on. The joke's on. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Oh. No, no. But this is worse than... Than, than... a shooting? Like old home week back in there? You wanted it this way, not me. You planned this. Trick you? Your final joke. On me? Mr. Patsy, you didn't care if I lost my wife, Judy, just as long as... As I pulled off this super final joke. I'm shaking you right now, I'm splitting. What's the sound? Not just me. It's two pairs of feet. Yeah, the jokes, the jokes, the jokes on... Yes, who? Oh. again. And here's the concluding act of The Jokes on Guess Who. Who is it? Me, Wilf. Who? I gotta see you, Vilma. It's late. I know it's late, but let me in, please. I'm not much to see, as you can see. I was just gonna turn in. The apartment without Judy, it's spooky. I need to be with somebody. But I have to go to work in the morning. It's late. I keep hearing that Gabby's voice laughing at himself. The born Patsy. Now we had him in the army, the loonies. All doomed. Some coffee? I just had a cup. And then go, please. I'm whacked. You got anything stronger? Sorry, you finished off my supply before you conked out on the couch there last night. None of that tonight. It's been okay in the day. Till today. Those reporters, friends, and Judy's relatives keeping me busy, but the shooting was just a one-day sensation. How little anything matters in the world, huh? Somebody killed yesterday, forgotten today. Well, here's your coffee. Thanks. Muffin? Hey, you're cool tonight, sweet Vilma. How much sleep have I had these last nights? You wanting to talk and talk and talk? You're as bad as your friend Gabby. Friend? A fiend? His gun's been traced to this apartment building. Do you know that, Wills? Yeah, that's a weird coincidence. Stolen from the caretaker. But police have figured that out. He must have been trailing me for some time before he surfaced at the sandbar. Dumb punk thought I was rich because I'm a name. Thought I'd be carrying a bankroll. And Judy'd be wearing gold and diamonds going to a concert. Drink up and go, please. Hey, well, that's real friendly. Sorry. I like Judy. I liked her a lot. And I feel very cheap now she's dead. Cheap? I don't be so thick-headed. You and me are occasional cuddling? It was cheap, and it's over. Well, how can it be over now? I was flattered, sure. Wolf Hinchcliffe, the war hero, paying attention to me. Then I met Judy. And it was never very right after that. For me, anyway. Didn't stop you, did it? No. But I'm answering for it right now. Judy keeps me awake at nights. Like the murderer you. Murderer? Oh, Gabby, yeah. I just hope that nothing I've done had anything to do with... with what happened to poor Judy. Well, what the devil does that mean? I don't know. That Gabby Gerstein, some kind of revenger to you, getting back at us? Not an ex-boyfriend, I hope. Oh, Wilf, is that all you can think of? Have you no more feeling for Judy than that? She's been murdered. She's dead. And you think we should carry on as if nothing happened? Yeah, I had to do that in a war all the time. Dig in, hang on, forget feelings. Well, I'm not going to forget mine. Wilf Hinchcliffe, war hero. You're my Patsy now. What do you think that Gabby's doing to me? <laughs> I feel sorry for Judy. What was done to her by you, by me, and by that Gabby Gerstein. Uh, So I'm the Patsy, am I, the way it's turned out? Is that what you're thinking? I'm confused. I I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, You too. What? Talking in circles, like the cops, like the relatives, like everybody. What should I have done? Drawn and fired sooner? Thrown myself on Gabby's gun as he blasted away? Uh, I made all those mistakes in the war, too. I should have saved everybody. And why didn't I? Because you're a patsy. Survived. This coward. And to rub it in, they load me down with medals. It affects me good. 
Abby, nice to me, Vilma. Be nice so I don't forget what a loss I was to Judy. I'll see you maybe tomorrow. No more tonight, please. Do you mind being a witness for me tomorrow night when you come home from work? Witness? Some insurance papers I have to sign. Can't you get anybody else? And over here to the side. Mr. Derek, if you sign as witness. I'm left with one chair. What? Nothing. Yes, these times, situations, formalities are difficult, but uh, life goes on. The last thing I want is to profit from Judy's insurance policy. Can't I just sign it over to some child care nursery or boys' club? A check comes to you, do what you want. But even that's not much of a gesture, huh? I meet a chick. What a chick. <laughs> last month. <laughs> I got it good and wonderful at last. She's my total. You know the feeling? Sorry to be bothering you with all this paperwork, but it's, it's everywhere, isn't it? Uh, regulations, forms. If I'd really had my head on right, I'd have planned this better. No reason to question your actions that night, Mr. Hinchcliffe. For me, in the same situation, I'd have been the biggest coward. Uh, but but uh, don't pass that around so the mothers in this town make a real patsy of me. <laughs> we'll keep it quiet. The police couldn't have praised you more highly, sir, the way you handled that fellow. Uh, bigger fools the cops. Why? Oh, he's trying to convince himself he's at fault somehow. And Judy's dead because of him. Uh, I know, Mr. Hinchcliffe. It's, uh, it's just a phase after bereavement. But why do there have to be these madmen in the world like me? Like that Gabby, whatever his name was. Good night, Mr. Hinchcliffe. Good night, Miss Derrick. Good night. I uh, should insure Judy for a million bucks and everything would be settled. Well, please, can't you get a hold on yourself? Unless you really have something to blurt out. No, no, I'm playing the game. What game? Everybody's game. Doesn't feel like my game. Gabby's game. He's bugging me into these moods, this chatter. I know a lot of it's... It's what? Senseless. Blurt it out to me first, whatever you... Whatever I want. You're as bad as I am. I'm going. I've been your witness. No, no, stay, stay. Don't go, don't. You haven't been my witness. But I don't want to hear what you're going to tell me. You're going to hear it anyway. Did Vietnam rob you of all your feelings? Hurting my arm. Only your arm. Lucky you. She sounds nice. Looks nice. Why can't you hang it up, man? I can't. I can't. All the good things, all the wonderful things, all the kind things. Well, who are you talking to? That Gabby. I can't get him out of this room or out of my head. Things you do and say don't seem real anymore. Oh, no, it's real. I know what's real. <gasps> switcheroo. Yeah, there's been a switcheroo. Oh, come on, sit down, Vilma. I'll tell you all about it. No, 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 no. I can't take another word. Or touch. I'm still rolling with you, Hinchcliffe. Still on the team. Gotcha. Inspector? Oh, Mr. Hinchcliffe, good to see you. I was just going to drop around and tell you what we found out about this Gerald Gabby Gerstein. You saved me the trip. I found out a lot about him, too. Oh, have a seat. Sorry about the clutter. Before we can clear one case away and get tidied up around here at the police station, we've got six more crowding us out of the office. So my case is filed with the archives and almost forgotten. Huh? Well, we've had our traces out. This is Gabby Gerstein. And no previous record. Reports on him, nice guy, unreliable, but okay, something of a clown. Game for anything, but accident prone. Uh, joked a lot about himself. He's always saying... I know. Can't you stop him? He's driving me crazy with his chatter and his laugh. <laughs> a, a real switcheroo. Didn't, didn't expect that, that trick. What did you say? That's him. Not me. You arranged this phony stick-up to impress your wife with how brave you are. <laughs> and I went for it. Believe it, pretty funny. Yes. Yeah. inside me now. That's not me talking. That's him. Yeah. I can see you're really great at fooling both friend and foe. 
Surprise, surprise, got a second gun. Shoot me, then take my gun and shoot your lovely wife dead. And scream and scream. It was all his fault. Pump his feet, it's killer. You ever hear of anything crazier than Gabby's talk and laugh? It's the last laugh, believe you me. Will Finchcliffe, is that what happened? Is that what you did? Yes, I got tired of Judy quickly and wanted somebody else, but without so much bother. No, no, there's nobody else. It was too wonderful with Judy. I needed to spoil it. I tried, but she stayed wonderful. <laughs> she never wanted to think or talk about the war. Whenever I was happy, I thought about the war and the guys. And I couldn't figure how everything was so good for me when it was all wiped out for, for my friends. Nothing more, nothing left. So I had to stop it for me, too. But that jab, he's killing himself laughing over the biggest joke of all. Driving me crazy. But he's right. He, he stopped, he stopped laughing. It's funny, isn't it, Inspector? There's a new guess who the joke's on. A big joke. Gabby Gerstein's friend, Hinchcliffe. And I'm right here where you need me. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Jokes on Guess Who was written by Lynn Peterson, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Barney Phillips and Robert Towers. Featured in the cast were Peggy Weber, Shepard Menken, Joan McCall, Jack Carroll, and Ivor Francis. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. like Donna Michaels and Tom Lewis on KMOX FM, St. Louis. KMOX FM. CBS News. The interim president of Nicaragua apparently has left the country. Most of the Nicaraguan National Guard troops reportedly have given up, and Sandinista guerrillas may be ready to take control of the country. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Francisco Acuyu was interim president for about a day and a half following the resignation of Anastasio Somoza. At first, Akuyu said he would stay on, but today he apparently changed his mind, left his headquarters, and was taken to the airport in Managua. United Press International says Akuyu is on his way to Guatemala. Reports late tonight indicate that most of the remaining National Guardsmen have agreed to surrender to the rebels, although a few holdouts are still on duty. In Managua, a curfew is still being imposed on the general population. CBS News reporter Charles Gomez and other journalists are inside the Intercontinental Hotel in Managua, and he says they're concerned about what might happen next. You have a situation where the National Guard does not have uh, the leader of a country anymore, and they are simply waiting for the Sandinista Frente to come into the city. The only people remaining in the Intercontinental Hotel, which is next door to the bunker, are some members of the International Press Corps and just a few members um, of the government. And the mood here is very, very tense because... Um, Many people fear that perhaps the Sandinistas might decide to come uh, into Managua even tonight as soon as they hear that uh, President Okuyo has left the country. Reporter Charles Gomez in Managua. President Carter has officially appointed his administration's first chief of staff, Hamilton Jordan. One of Jordan's first moves in his formal title was to send out several hundred staff evaluation forms to cabinet officers and White House assistants. Jordan wants detailed reports on performances and personalities of subordinates. The forms also ask for information on maturity, stability, and loyalty of all political appointees in the administration. And they're expected to be returned to Jordan's office by Friday. Mr. Carter held meetings today with several top aides and with at least one cabinet official, but there's still no clear word on which resignations he'll accept or when. The U.S. dollar opened Thursday's trading on the Tokyo Foreign Exchange at 213.60 yen. That's a drop of 2 yen from Wednesday's closing. 
There was some good economic news today from the federal government. Housing construction during June rose to its highest level of the year, but the housing industry says it's just a statistical fluke and predicts a sharp drop in housing construction in the months ahead. The chief economist for the National Association of Home Builders, Michael Schmerz, says some stock builders, some uh, builders stockpile building permits earlier in the year, especially in Florida, and then use them during June to push up the overall construction level. United Auto Workers Union opened bargaining talks today with Chrysler by promising not to make it a strike target. The union also is making an unprecedented request to the federal government to help Chrysler. The UAW says government fuel economy and pollution rules are putting a severe financial squeeze on the company. A new race is threatening the human race. Joseph Weizenbaum told a conference of scientists and theologians meeting in Cambridge, Massachusetts, that humans are being dwarfed by computers. He says the computers are also alienating and intimidating people. And it's so serious, says Weizenbaum, that we're rapidly losing physical and mental control of our society. He says the signs are everywhere. Massively distorted perceptions of reality too deep.